Yo, what's going on YouTube? Excuse the background noise. My da dog is down here and she's like, she like grunts. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with her. And I think it's just because of old age. But we are here to talk about the 2005 British horror film directed and written by Neil Marshall. We have The Descent. Uh, this started a sequel series. Um, I might watch part two sometime soon. Um, the first movie was actually pretty good here. I actually really enjoyed this a little more than I thought I would. I mean, this is actually a pretty decent movie. Um, yeah, uh, we can just get into the plot. We can get into the critical reception. I'm going to post this and then go... I have to take a freaking biology exam, I think, today. Um, but yeah, we're going to be watching The Sopranos today. I'm probably going to do two streams today. I think I'll do a day and a night stream. So yeah, let's get into it. So getting into the plot, this follows Thrill Seeker friends Sarah, Juno. Sorry, I don't know why I uh, did that. But uh, yeah, Sarah, Juno, and Beth are Thrill Seekers who go white water rafting together. Afterwards, Sarah, along with her husband Paul and their daughter Jessica, are involved in a car accident when Paul is distracted. Paul and Jessica are killed, but Sarah survives. It was kind of confusing. I thought Paul died, for, or Paul survived it for some reason, but they both died. It was like literally like another Final Destination type of death. Like these like metal stakes like flew through their windshield and stabbed them, like impaled them with it. It's crazy. Uh, that I don't really know if that has that much to do with the actual story, but I guess it's like a traumatic thing, and she kind of sees things throughout the film. I'm just not sure that it's a super important detail that we needed at the beginning of the movie, but yeah, whatever. So, one year later, Sarah, Juno, and Beth, as well as friends Sam, Rebecca, and newcomer Holly, reunited a cabin in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina for a spelunking adventure. So, yeah, they just like going on adventures. They like trying new things, you know, whitewater rafting, caving, cliff, like, base jumping, a bunch of crazy shit. And I don't really understand people that like this, but, eh, whatever. Uh, the next day, they hike up to a mountain cave entrance and descend, which is why it's called the descents, because they're slowly getting deeper and deeper into this cave. Mysterious things start kind of happening and at first when this movie was going on I was like, okay, is this just gonna be like one of those things where oh they were just seeing things My dog is so loud. I apologize Is, is this just is this just gonna be a film where they're seeing things and it like haunts Sarah as they go through the cave? Or is there gonna be an actual creature involved? And we find out very soon the answer to that question so the next day they hike up, or yeah, the while in the cave, Juno apologizes to Sarah for not being there for her after the accident, but Sarah is distant. She's like, can we not talk about this? You know, it's not really the good time. We're trying to have a good time ourselves and you're just bringing back past experiences. This is going to be a long video, by the way, because I feel like the, the plot is a little, it has a decent amount going on. It's very action packed once you get into the third act and the climax of everything, you know? So after the group moves through a narrow passage, it collapses behind them, trapping them. They almost, like, get squished in there. Obviously, people have died caving that way. It, it's, I don't know why people decide to go through narrow passageways that are covered in loose rock, but whatever. So after a heated discussion, Juno admits that she has led the group into an unknown cave system instead of the fully explored cave system that they had originally planned to visit, making rescue impossible. It's unexplored, at least they think. Sorry. There's a reason why this cave is labeled unexplored because the people that have came before, well, we'll find out soon later, you know. Um, so yeah, she took them to the wrong cave because she wants to find a new thing and make it an adventure and make them escape, but everyone's pissed at her because why the hell would you do this? We're probably going to die in here now because we don't know where the hell we're going. So she then tells Sarah that this adventure was in the hopes of restoring their relationship like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, that's that's just fucked up to say. So as the group presses forward with hopes of finding an exit, they discover aged climbing equipment <coughs> and a cave painting that suggests an exit exists. Maybe some, like, old, like, prehistoric fucking people, some people centuries ago came to this cave and explored it, but for recent memory, no one did. And if they see this equipment, they're kind of assuming, okay, there's people that discovered this, but they most likely didn't make it out. So I guess we're going to be the first ones to fight an escape. I don't know how that makes it fucking cool to do this. Oh, Jesus. Fucking lead just went everywhere. Whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, 
Uh, Holly, thinking she sees sunlight, runs ahead but falls down a hole and breaks her leg like her bone is protruding out of her leg. It's fucking gross, man. It really is. Um... So as the others help Holly, Sarah wanders away and observes a pale humanoid creature drinking at a pool before it scampers away. And this is kind of the creatures that we're going to see. There's a fuck ton of these things. We're going to see them like throughout the film and it's obviously going to be like the big monster, the big antagonist, the evil force against this group of people. So she hears like her daughter laughing and it's like a hallucination or something. And she goes and checks it out, not even helping her friend Holly, which I thought was a really weird thing that this show decided to do there. I'm trying to figure with this pencil out. I just have to fiddle with my pencil, sorry. Uh, sorry about the uh, technical difficulties, I'm kind of stalling a little bit. But um, later, the group comes across a den of animal bones and is suddenly attacked by a creature known as a crawler, is what they're calling it. And yeah, this is where everything kind of starts. This is where it gets super intense. Holly is killed when the crawler attacks and bites through her throat. So they're slowly starting to learn the capabilities of these creatures. Sarah runs and falls down a hole where she is knocked unconscious. I'm not sure how the fuck she didn't die from this. I'm pretty sure she like smacked her head on some rocks. But plot convenience, I guess. You know, keeping the main characters alive for as long as possible. So Juno, trying to prevent Holly's body from being dragged away, kills a crawler with her pickaxe. But then... Startled and in shock, accidentally strikes Beth through the neck, and this is one of the craziest parts of this film. She thought there was a crawler behind her. She turns around, shlink, and there's Beth, and she gets, she slowly is like dying throughout the film. I'm not sure how she didn't die right then and there, because if you hit the juggler, blood is just squirting out of you, and you're gonna fucking die. I guess this movie just, I don't know, wanted to create some drama. So. Beth collapses with Juno's pendant in her hand and begs Juno not to leave her, but a traumatized Juno flees. It's like, what the, this, she runs away from her problems. It seems like a theme for her character that this show's kind of trying to push a little bit. So yeah, Sarah awakens to find herself in a den of human and animal carcasses, witnessing Holly's body being mauled and eaten by crawlers, and she just has to kind of sit back. And we're kind of learning more about these creatures throughout the film. More details are revealed and I found out the hard way. Um... So Juno discovers cave markings from previous explorers that point to a specific path through the caves. These people were marking their way as they went down, so if they were able to escape, they could get out. But they obviously didn't, because no one even reported this cave being discovered. So Juno locates Sam and Rebecca. Um, Sam has deduced that the crawlers are blind and rely on sound to hunt. She's like this health expert person. She's going to like a nursing field, so she knows a lot about things like of that nature. Juno tells them about the markings, but she will not leave without Sarah. They have to go down, they have to figure out where she's at, and they're just going to follow the markings and hopefully get out. Obviously, they lost some members, but at least some people can get out alive, or will they, I guess. I don't know. So, meanwhile, Sarah encounters Beth, who tells her that Juno wounded, then abandoned her. Like, don't trust anything she says. She's a snake. Fuck her, you know. Beth gives Juno's pendant to Sarah, telling her it is a gift from Paul, and Sarah realizes that Juno and Paul had an affair before his death. So Juno's just a fucking traitor, she's just a terrible friend, she's fake, we kind of figure this out, and it's so interesting, there's so many things kind of sprinkled in this film, so many themes, so many crazy revelations and reveals, I really like this film for that, it keeps you on your toes, um, yeah, uh, so Beth begs Sarah to euthanize her, which Sarah reluctantly does by bashing her head in with a rock. Could have just stabbed her, impaled her one time and killed her, but... Yeah. She wanted to just get taken out of her suffering, right? So, Sarah then encounters several crawlers and manages to kill them all, falling into a blood-filled pool in the process and emerging covered in blood. And she looks fucking badass. She looks like fucking, what is his name, Commando? Um, the Sylvester Stallone... When he's, like, covered in mud, I think. She's, like, covered in blood. It kind of reminds me of that. Maybe it's Rambo I was thinking of. Sorry. So, elsewhere, Juno, Sam, and Rebecca are pursued by a larger group of crawlers. They reach a chasm, and Sam tries to climb across, but a crawler, scaling the ceiling, attacks and, like, literally rips her throat out. It's fucking brutal. This movie's a lot more brutal than I imagined it to be, but it's good. It's a horror movie. It has everything you need in it. I think it's really good. Sam stabs it before bleeding to death in front of Juno and Rebecca. 
Rebecca is then dragged away and eaten alive as Juno escapes. So now it's pretty much Juno and Sarah still alive. Um, Juno encounters Sarah and lies to her about seeing Beth die. She fucking killed Beth. What are you talking about? So after defeating a group of crawlers close to the exit, Sarah confronts Juno, revealing the pendant and her knowledge of Beth's fate and the affair with Paul. This is like a big confessional she's having. Sarah then strikes Juno in the leg with a pickaxe and leaves her to die as a swarm of crawlers approaches. I mean, I don't fucking blame her. What a piece of shit. Holding this away from your best friend for the longest time. Like you're an asshole, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Juno is last heard screaming as Sarah escapes. Sarah falls down a hole and is knocked unconscious. Um... Obviously, there's some plot convenience kind of intertwined in the end of the film because when she awakens, she sees sunlight and clambers up a slope covered in bones to escape the cave. Um, I thought she was going to get like pulled back in, but the movie kind of decided, okay, this is the resolution that we're going to go with. So <coughs> after exhaustively running to her car, <coughs> she speeds out of the woods before she pulls over to the side of the road, breaking down in tears. <coughs> <coughs> After a truck passes her, she vomits out of the window. Obviously, like, I don't know. Because it reminds her of her family dying and it had, like, poles in the back. And there's some crazy imagery that this movie creates. When she sits up, she sees a hallucination of a bloodified Juno sitting next to her and screams. Um, having imagined her escape, Sarah wakes up back in the cave and sees a vision of Jessica. She smiles as the shrieks of crawlers grow closer. So, yeah, that's pretty much the plot. Let's get into the review because I've wasted enough time here. So getting into the review, I mean, on release, uh, this claustrophobic story of six women who stumble across something nasty on a caving trip got arguably the best reviews of any Brit movie recently. I, I think this is a really good British film. Um, yeah, I think it's really good. Uh, a lot of people liked it. Death direction and strong performances from its all-female cast guide The Descent, a riveting claustrophobic horror film. Obviously, if you're claustrophobic, probably shouldn't watch it. I think it's pretty good, though. Um, you know, the... Yeah, um... This is the fresh, exciting summer movie that people have been wanting at the time. I mean, for years, there, was, there weren't movies like this, and then finally we get The Descent, and it's, it's really good, man. I like it. Uh, it's one of the better horror entertainments that I've seen recently on this channel. Um, indisputably and pleasurably nerve jangling. Um, you know, the claustrophobic atmosphere was great. Uh, the sexual overtones and the all female cast with their labored breathing and sweaty clothing was a bit weird. I feel like this show was trying to do something there, trying to tell us something, trying to get us to do something, and I don't want to discuss it. But yeah, um, the film devoted it into a guessing game of who would survive. You know, Marshall's nightmare imagery was great for generating scares that work better than other horror films. It's a scary fucking film. And there, there are some pretty frequent jump scares. And these creatures are pretty creepy. And their shrieks are quite harrowing, you know. It's it's crazy. I, I like it. Um, you know, the attempt to add dimension to the female characters was weird. But, I mean, the actresses were, weren't super great. I'm not going to say they were bad actresses. I mean... Natalie Mendoza is a pretty popular actor. Uh, I don't really know who all is a popular actor here. Or actress, sorry. Um, I don't really know my actresses like that. Or actors for that matter. But yeah, it had a pretty decent cast. Maybe if the acting was slightly better, this movie would be better. But I don't really mind it. I like the gore in it. I'm obviously not like a gore porn guy. Like I don't only watch movies for like gore. But... It's a really good movie, brings up a good story, has some good like life lessons and symbolism and themes and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. With that being said, I don't really have much to say. I'm out. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe tonight. If there's any good basketball games, which I'm assuming there's probably going to be, I will discuss it on the channel. I have work tomorrow from 11 to 7, so we'll see how content goes. I'm going to probably do a Soprano review and then do another recap video tomorrow night. Um, Saturday. We'll probably do a 2K gameplay. We might do a couple gameplays. Like, if there's a couple good players that come out, we'll probably do a couple throughout the weekend. Um, I think, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because Christmas Eve is on Sunday. So, I don't, Sunday and Monday are, like, the Christmas stuff. So, I'll probably only do, like, one video a day for those. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm out. Peace.